Will my cat express his undying appreciation for me when I present him with a custom-made hammock that I spent days working on? Or will he instead choose to sit in a cardboard box? Cat owners can probably guess the answer to that question. Let's find out if they're right. Because March is my cat's birthday month, and he has a number of beds, including this heated one right over here, which are more appropriate for winter weather. I want to make him a custom hammock to fit into that window right over there that is more summer appropriate. So let's get started. The plan for this hammock is pretty straightforward. At its most basic, it includes both a lower and upper PVC frame connected together and covered by fabric. The top frame, which is meant to support the fabric canopy, is made from half-inch PVC pipe. For stability purposes, the bottom frame, which supports the portion my cat will be sitting on, is made from 1-inch PVC and connects to the top with an adapter I 3D printed. The original plan included the construction of a 1-inch PVC rectangular cuboid, is that a word? Because again, I wanted a really stable base. But then I realized that I'd failed to take into account how much taller the 1-inch corner connectors would make that frame, so I just eliminated that bottom rectangle and turns out it's just fine. If you're looking to both simplify the process and save money, 3 quarter inch PVC pipe is probably your best bet. In a recurring theme, when I assembled the top frame, it turns out I also forgot to take into account the difference between the center placement of the 1 inch PVC adapters and the half inch ones. So back to the ratchet cutters once again to trim it down. Remember everyone, measure once, cut twice. Cut, 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 trim, trim, trim. Cut, 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 trim, trim, trim. All right. For the fabric portion of the hammock base, I am using this twill material. It's a uh, reasonably sturdy twill. However, it isn't a super super heavy duty utility twill. So there is a little bit of give in it. It's a woven, it's 100% cotton. Uh, anyone who's old enough to remember when you could actually purchase 100% cotton jeans that they would sort of stretch over time in a different way that the current spandexy ones don't. Um, so because of that, what I'm going to do is actually underline this entire piece with some ripstop nylon. Uh, this is also a woven uh, and it has a little bit of give on it in it, but it's just going to provide a little more support uh, than just this one fabric on its own. Even though I don't necessarily think my sub 10 pound cat maybe needs it. If you can uh, over engineer something, why would you just engineer it? To make it easier to correctly size the fabric for the hammock, I traced around the PVC frame and used that to draft a pattern. I then cut out one from each of the two fabrics, sewed them right sides together, and then flipped everything back right side out again like you would if you were sewing a pillow. Then I just sewed the edges over to create the channels where the PVC pipe base would slide through. But of course, I ran into yet another small problem. All right, so I went through and undid everything and turned it back uh, inside out and just cut these curves a little deeper. Uh, I was trying to maximize my space here, but it seems like to get it to fit like this, um, it needs to be below these uh, attachments. So there you go. <laughs> so the next part is 
we have the top part that's going to fit in here and I won't attach that yet. And I have a bunch of this lightweight, I have a bunch of lightweight fabric. I think it's a, some sort of poly cotton blend that I bought for a different project that never really materialized. So, um, you can see this is pretty lightweight. So uh, there's going to be some sort of uh, decorative process where I'm going to be covering this and then also cutting holes in some areas. And of course, at least one side needs to have an opening where he can get in and out. If you have multiple cats, you probably want multiple openings so they don't feel trapped. But I'm a one cat household, so he likes to be ensconced in things. And part of the reason for this is that I'm going to have kind of a window um, so that he can kind of hide in it. But then if he wants to look out, he can kind of peek his little head out, you know, like, <laughs> like he likes to do. So hopefully he'll enjoy that. But um, we all know how cats are. So this could be a, uh, a, a wasted effort. <laughs> so um, I'll get to work on this and see how that goes. I decided I wanted to create a sort of stripe pattern on the canopy portion. So I'm sewing several strips together of different colored fabric. And because I want the inside to also be fairly neat, it'll help with the cutting of the little portholes later. I am doing one of my favorite techniques, which is French seaming. I should probably do an instructional video one of these days, but the gist of it is, instead of doing right sides together, you do wrong sides together, sew a seam, flip it, and then sew the right sides together with the seam on the inside, so it's totally encased. In my case, I like to top stitch the seam as well, just to keep it nice and flat, but that isn't strictly necessary. And here I am cutting some holes in the fabric for little lookout points for my cat. And to finish the edges of those holes, I'm unfortunately going to have to create something that is probably my least favorite thing to do in sewing, and that is to create bias tape. Okay, final assembly. Uh, something that I made are these, just these little bumpers to kind of shove in here, just so my cat doesn't have to be leaning up right against the plastic and he's got a little soft spot because he loves a good pillow. <laughs> so we'll put those in there right now. And now I got this whole cover. I just kind of have these little ties here. And this is the side 
that's going to be aimed at the window. So you can see he's got a couple little portholes he can look out of. And this side actually faces the uh, rest of the room. And I designed this just a little Velcro piece so I can, it's totally removable, but I can also kind of just do a little, kind of like a little half opening so I can kind of peek in there, but he's still sort of covered. Okay, well, next step is to see if the cat will actually sit in it. <laughs> we all know how that sometimes goes. Hmm. It's time to play cat guessing games. The show where the questions don't matter and the cat is always right. Today we're guessing Maestro's top five places to sit. Listed in non-sequential order because I'm pretty sure Maestro can't count. Number four on the list, cardboard box. It's a classic for a reason. You knew it was coming. Number two, heated cat pod. This is kind of a no-brainer. He loves this bed. Number three, custom cat bed. Can't all be winners. Number five, the hardwood floor. He's got a bunch of beds, but if he's got a personal masseuse, I guess the floor is great. And number one on the list, my lap. Okay, cat, you're forgiven. Have a happy birthday, little one. And for everyone else, if today isn't your birthday, have a happy unbirthday. Over here. Hey, it's hey. <gasps> Look at that. Look at you. Uh-huh. I mean, I may or may not have put some silver vine in there. <laughs> What's going on in there? Yeah. Oh. Hi. Hey. 